Well, I'm now joined by uh, my friend and colleague, uh, Gwen Morrison, the CEO of the store for the Americas, uh, and Amy Venner, who is the retail vertical uh, strategist uh, at Pinterest. Um, thanks very much indeed for uh, joining us. Um, Amy, um, when you search for stuff these days, you know, it's a very sort of, um, I suppose, uh, technological process. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> zero serendipity around it. Um, and uh, very uncurated. Um, how do you see the world changing in terms of this notion of curating uh, some uh, content um, that allows you to have a sort of a more rounded view of uh, what you're seeing? I think from a Pinterest perspective, uh, we see the camera as the new keyboard. So giving people tools to then see the world and discover visually things in the real world or inside of a store that speak to you and find ideas that are related to that. And so being able to save those ideas onto boards and hand curate the name of that board creates all these data points that allow us to help make your content more relevant every time you experience a search or go to the home feed on Pinterest. And, and how, Gwen, do you see that now? developing to help people um, understand ranges, to get a feel of, uh, of the sort of styles that they may be interested in as opposed to an individual product and a SKU. Sure, and I'll give you an example. If you were just keying in you know, men's blue dress shirt as a, as a search uh, using words, uh, whether it's mobile, tablet, or otherwise, you'll get maybe a couple blue men's shirts, then you'll get a red shirt, then you'll get a blue dress, then you, who knows what you're going to get. And I've seen this with some of the most sophisticated uh, formats and, and um, temp, uh, uh, channels that just somehow lose the direction of where this consumer is going, and it just kind of falls apart. So what we're finding is in visual search, um, there's more inspiration and more of like a connection to the imagery and building, building on you know, images like this image, you actually get much more of a curated catalog, if you will, whether it's something that's provided by a retailer, a brand, or maybe an individual that's putting, you know, inspiring boards together about a vacation. Um, and the other side to that could be the um, opportunity, the upside, that it is more of a creative discovery process. So the individual consumer is replicating uh, the, the best of retail experiences uh, when they're engaging with visual search. Now, um, I suppose Pinterest used to be cent centered around, or maybe it still is, we'll find out in a minute, uh, centered around you know, individuals creating boards, creating their own community. How have uh, companies and brands now uh, used Pinterest? Yeah, so the majority of content on Pinterest is from brands or retailers, and the consumer experience is being able to discover things that are, to Gwen's point, aesthetically similar. So a blue shirt to Gwen may be something very different than a blue shirt for me, where I have a button down, it's a little more androgynous, you'll probably have something that's a little more stylish, but the idea that you can um, create these experiences where it's a, it's a personal experience for me based on the brands and styles that I'm attracted to. And I can then curate that by saving again the content and then it just makes my home feed smarter with what's I'm, what things I'm shown at what moment I'm looking. And, and what do smart retailers, brand owners now need to know about optimizing for Pinterest? I think brands need to remember that What's important isn't necessarily just that last signal of intent before the purchase. What's important is being able to introduce your product, your, your brand, at the moment, at the early stages before someone decided what it is they were going to buy. They have an idea of what they want. Um, they're in market for you know, an, a Sunday brunch um, pair of jeans or a Sunday brunch uh, hat, but they don't know who they're going to buy it from yet. If you're in the consideration set early on and um, you have the opportunity to have a visual lifestyle image, not just a product laydown shot, shot and a price point, 
uh, being there at the early stage guarantees that you're part of the consideration later. Well, you had a great phrase. It was called return on inspiration. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah, nice. I love this. I and mean, I think we want to dig deeper into it. But really getting to investing and inspiring consumers, is the that's the wide part of the funnel. Yeah. yeah. Once you get an inspired yeah. consumer, the is, passion yeah. that drives that purchase makes it accelerated, makes them spend a little yeah. more to fulfill that vision of what they're trying I mean, to achieve. I mean, it's difficult to use those words, you know, sort of passion Mm -hmm. in terms of a search engine, is it? I mean, that's... I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that's maybe what it was coming to, because you were talking about these attitudes of consumers based on their aesthetics and, and their likes as, as a new kind of currency, a new lens in which to look at uh, consumers based on common interests. Yep. And, and what's the term you had for that? That was... Um, you know, now I'm catching you're catching yeah, yeah, me off guard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember the term yeah, I used. But you know, I think of like, I, I said, you know, we've come a long way from pools and patios where we used to define consumers by zip codes and where they live and do yes. they have a deck or a pool and now it's really like I like this chair. Yes. You know? so I know it I when I respond to a style. Yeah. I know it when I see it. And, that and what change yeah. and influence is this all having in terms of the of uh, sort of what one would typically call the path to purchase, although you know um, life's changed a lot, um, in terms of the way in which consumers are using these types of tools along their journey of uh, of interest to purchase. Yeah, I mean, when I look back at pre phone in my pocket, able to access anything, the physical store was how I found out about possibilities in my life. And so to your point, I think the opportunity is being part of that experience visually. Um, early enough on, you just change the dynamics of the path to purchase and you're pivoting from inspired to let's drill down deep and look at the five retailers that offer those products, but not quite what I'm looking for. Go back up. Oh, I love that. Go back down. That really is a unique behavior. Like one of the themes that's already emerging at uh, Stream Commerce uh, here in Miami uh, this morning is how important voice is going to be uh, in the future uh, for, for all of us, for brand owners, for consumers, um, and for uh, retailers. What's your view of uh, voice and uh, what people need well, to know? I think it has a long way to go still. I would mean, certainly not recognizing uh, the more emotional cue from one, the voice, there's been some frustration where you're going down the path. I, I saw the example, if you, if you say, I want to a hotel not near the Eiffel Tower, you're as likely to get that hotel recommendation that is near the Eiffel Tower. So just some of these subtle, you know, our, the languaging of it still has a long way to go. I think what has been interesting this morning, you know, building on the themes of um, technology, shopping, bringing in the humanity of it, and then this inspirational idea is that you want to see a future where we're taking voice and visual imagery together, potentially, to start to get much better at um, this kind of a conversational way to shop um, with, that's more sensory. So that's, that really, to me, is the leap, is going from this very kind of this rote behavior, I want another this, I want another that, click, 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 to an experience that allows people to feel like they're inter inter interacting with the world and with the world's great retailers. I mean, digitally, we started sort of with the least human way mm -hmm. to search for things, which is with texts and words, um, the most human way for mm -hmm. a physical experience yeah. is navigating with your eyes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and Pinterest in a, in a voice-enabled world? I mean, what can we our, expect? <laughs> our focus really is allowing that sort of mobile with that limited real estate that everyone covets, having the most inspiring, discoverable experience that allows for a more personalized sort of um, exchange. So that's our focus. We, we're sticking to it. Okay, well, uh, Amy and Gwen, thank you very much thank for joining you. us. Thank, thank you, you very much for Appreciate having us. Appreciate it.